I found a template online for the handle that looked about right. And there's a link in the description to that. But I wanted to kind of do some changes to it to get rid of uh, some of the things that I didn't think were necessary and also to change up the shape a little bit. I want this to blend right into the spine of the saw. So to do that, I would have to change some of the curves. So the next thing was to find a piece of stock that was big enough to make the handle one piece. I have lots of three quarter inch boards that are wide enough, but the handle really should be closer to one inch thick. I didn't want to glue up two pieces, so I found one single one that's an inch and a half thick and four inches wide. Then I could cut it to rough length and rip it down to a little bit more than one inch thick on the table saw. With the blank cut down to size, I can paste on the template that I drew up, making sure that I line the spine up straight through. I want straight grain all the way along the spine of the saw. Then I took the ruler and extended the lines from my template onto the wood, since the paper that I used wasn't big enough to draw the whole saw on. Two larger holes are one and a quarter inches, and the smaller one is one inch. After the holes are drilled, I could cut out the shape on the bandsaw, getting as close to the line as I possibly could. the handle cut out the rough shape, I can bring it back to the drill press and drill the two pilot holes for the screws that will go through to secure the blade into the handle. The next operation to do on the handle is to reduce the thickness of the spine down to 3 8 of an inch. I'm leaving a little bit on the end to support it there so that it doesn't dip down into the saw as I cut more of it away. I've got the blade sticking out 5 16 of an inch and I'm just going to nibble away the material all the way across. Now that the spine is cut down to rough thickness, I'm going to take it to the router table and round over the edges on the handle itself. And this will be the first pass. What I'll do after this is bring it to the spindle sander, do the final smoothing around the curves, then bring it back to the router table again and route those roundovers again to make them perfect. With the major shaping done on the handle, I can try it in my hand and see how it fits. I nipped off the ends with the three quarter inch chisel and then clamped the handle down to my workbench with a support block underneath it that's the same thickness as the material that I removed. And now I'm going to use the three quarter inch chisel as kind of a scraper to flatten it out as much as I can. I'm holding the chisel at a slight angle so it doesn't fall right down inside the grooves left by the table saw blade. Now I'm going to chisel away the majority of the material for the transition from the handle to the spine. To finish the shaping at that transition, I'll take the rest away at the spindle sander. Although I could use a round file or even a dowel with sandpaper wrapped around it. What comes next is a lot of sanding to get the handle smooth and all the corners rounded over to my satisfaction. I've got an old handsaw that I bought for two dollars that I'm going to use for the blade. It has a kink in it, but I'm pretty sure I can get enough out of it for this. The first thing I want to do is take the set out of the saw by filing the teeth down flush with the sides. I'm doing this so that I won't tear up my sandpaper as I remove the rust from the plate. Now I'm going to use the grinder to cut the blade off to roughly the size that I need. Now I want to remove as much of the rust as I can from the blade and I'm going to be fairly aggressive. I'm going to use 100 grit paper and a spray cleaner as lubricant to help with the cutting. When the majority of the rust is gone from each side, I'll switch to finer sandpaper and work on it until I'm happy with how it looks. On a side note, the rust from the saw would make a pretty good dark walnut stain. Now that I've got the blade all cleaned up and I'm happy with how smooth it is, I can cut it to its final size. 
I have to cut a slot that's in the center of the spine and the handle. And I figured out that my half inch Baltic birch plywood is exactly the right thickness to support the blade to do this. As you can see, I have to be very careful here. And this is gonna take a while to do. Eventually it gets to the point where I can take it off of the jig I have set up on the bench and clamp the blade in my vise and finish the cut that way. There's no chance that it'll go offline now. There's enough of a slot there to guide it. What I'm looking to do is cut a little over halfway into the spine so that the blade has maximum support. Now that I've got the slot cut to the right depth, I can put the blade in, making sure that the teeth are pointing the right way. And I've used a couple of strips of tape to hold it to make sure that it doesn't slide back and forth as I mark the holes that I need to drill through the blade. Since the blade will never be taken out of this side, I don't see any reason to not fully glue it in. So I've added a strip of tape to the edge of the spine. I'm going to make a slit in that so that I can pour some epoxy in there without getting it all over the wood. Then slip the blade in and add the pins. The pins I'm using are just number eight machine screws that I'll screw in with some epoxy and cut them off flush after. While I'm waiting for the epoxy to set on the blade and the pins, I can get the teeth set on the blade. Now that the teeth are set, the pins cut off and filed smooth, I can give it its final sharpening and it's ready to use. So that's it, finished, at least to the point where I'm happy with it. I'm gonna give the handle a couple more coats of wipe on polyurethane just to make it a little bit smoother, a little bit more protection against moisture from my hand when I'm cutting. Although I don't anticipate cutting a lot of uh, dovetails by hand. It's nice to have something like this and I thought I would, you know, take the time to do it. People often ask me how long these projects take. This one, I started it at eight o'clock this morning. It is roughly 6.30 now in the evening. Uh, so one day to do this, that includes, you know, waiting for things to dry too. Uh, the video that you're watching right now, another story, that's another full day plus some probably. So anyway, hope you liked it and thanks for watching.